Hello everyone and welcome to today's Get Ready With Me. A get Ready With Me where I'm gonna be talking about, why am I taking my glasses off already? Um, but basically, I wanna talk about why, why do people care? Why do people care so much? Why do people gotta insert their opinions where their opinions are not needed? And why do people just gotta have these opinions in the first place? I mean, they are allowed to, but dang. I feel like life would be so much better for everyone involved if their opinion could change. I'm talking about gender norms, and I'm talking about dating norms, and I'm talking about body image norms, I guess, kind of. At least, you know, this is all in America. I can only speak from experience. I do live in and grew up in America, so that is where I'm gonna be speaking from. But I just, you know, since introducing you all to my boyfriend, uh, you all have had some opinions and I don't like some of them. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Like I said, you all are allowed to have these opinions, but I do think that they are very archaic opinions and I want to talk about it. But first, I do want to go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video. A big thank you to Scentbird. You all know I love Scentbird. They are the fragrance subscription service that gives you a chance to try out new perfumes or revisit old perfumes that you love without having to buy a full bottle and waste a full bottle because how often do we actually go through a full bottle of perfume before we want to switch things up? You know, with the changing of seasons, the changing of moods. I know for me, it's basically impossible to go through a full bottle. So Scentbird is perfect for people like me and others. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service where you get to pick out and try new designer fragrances every month for just $17, no surprises. Scentbird is a place for you to begin your journey with fragrance or to deepen it, whether you're looking to discover your own style through fragrance or if you're just looking to freshen things up for the upcoming winter season here or whatever season is coming your way, Scentbird acts as a place for you to explore your individuality through fragrance. With each fragrance you get a 30-day supply so it is a huge bottle and ample time for you to test out your scent before you commit to a full bottle plus you can skip out on months anytime you need, no penalties, or you can upgrade to receive two to three fragrances a month. They have a recommendation quiz to help you find fragrances that you'll love. Based on your preferences, previous purchases, and quiz answers, Scentbird is going to help you find the next fragrance for you to love. There are over for 600 designer brands to choose from, perfumes, colognes, and unisex scents. And like I said, they stock top designer brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, plus indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. Like I said, these vials are huge. They are eight times bigger than regular perfume samples, plus the packaging, you guys. They have got this new packaging here, and it is so sleek, so chic. I love it. It is magnetic, so it is nice and secure. You can still pop it in your bag. It's got the twist so that you can lock it so that it won't spray out and then you just twist it so that you can spray it out when you want to freshen up and then it just unclicks there. Like I said, magnetized, but if you want to switch out your scent, it just pops open really nice and easy for you to exchange your vial for something new. You guys know I love that magnetic click. So this month I've got four new fragrances to tell you guys about, and I'm gonna tell you I need to apologize. I will probably pronounce things incorrectly, but I'm trying my best. Michel Germain Sexual Noir. This has notes of vanilla, vetive, amber, pink orchid, and jasmine. It is really, really playful and sensuous. Etat Libre d'Orange, The Ghost in the Shell. This has notes of aqua, yuzu, peach, hexyl acetate, and pear. Got some new stuff in there for me to try out. I'm excited about that. It's supposed to be very modern and lovely. We've also got Christian Siriano's Silhouette Au Naturel, a natural barely there fragrance that smells like you, but better. Notes of mandarin, peach nectar, water lily, coconut blossom, and skin musks. And then we have Amouage Honor, a classic white floral fragrance, which I love. This has notes of rhubarb leaves, coriander, jasmine, 
jasmine, tuberose, and amber. So really excited to try out these new scents this month and also really excited about these new vials. Like I said, they are just so sleek and pretty. Nothing wrong with the old ones, but these new ones, just something fun and new. So as I said, if you're looking for a gift for a loved one or yourself this upcoming holiday month, or you just want to give Scentbird a try, I would highly recommend them. You can shop the edit on Scentbird, where you can purchase full-size body lotions, diffusers, candles, and full-size fragrances for yourself or for someone you love. And if you want to get yourself a great deal, make sure to click my link below and use the code THRIFT. 55 for 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. Plus, I also have exciting news. Scentbird is now available in Canada as well. So thank you guys so much for listening and thank you to Scentbird once again for sending me these new fragrances to try. As I said, I'm always super excited about that. And thank you once again for sponsoring this video. So without further ado, Let's get on to the video. So the video, the get ready with me. I already have foundation and concealer and primer on because I'm doing a weekly wear today, but I've still got plenty of other makeup to put on. So don't, don't worry. We still have stuff to do and things to talk about. Mainly being, as I said, gender norms. Let's talk about them and what it's like dating someone outside of a gender norm and also not being someone who lives in a body outside of the gender norms, but definitely someone who lives in a body who doesn't fit into societal hotness of the female body or what they say is hot for the female body as i think i said and or alluded to in the beginning i mean first things first when you guys say things like wow your boyfriend dan he has long hair and paints his nails must be gay like i said it is so just archaic and close-minded and narrow-minded and i just i i really i can't I can believe, but I also can't believe that people still exist that think so simple and narrow-mindedly. It is actually brain-numbing and brain-bending. I, I really didn't know that people still existed like this. Like I said, I do, but I, I don't know, you guys. The internet it brings out the best in people, huh? Brings out the best people sometimes, um, and I just, it's... It's a lot, but it also is what it is. And I think we should have an open conversation about it. Granted, when I say open conversation, I'm not changing my opinion. That's probably a horrible way to set up an open conversation. But I just, I refuse to go back in time. I refuse. Although honestly, going back in time would kind of make sense because back in, you know, medieval times and back in time, perfectly normal for guys to have long hair. And even now, it's not that it's not normal. I guess it's uncommon but to think that just because it's uncommon for guys to keep their hair long by the way someone had commented and I got a bunch of upvotes that I should try putting my contour up higher it feels so foreign but I'm, I'm trying it so I am putting it not in my cheekbone like I normally do I'm putting it like under my cheek blob <laughs> What is anatomy? Did that make a difference? Did I did I do a thing? Did I do it right? You can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm wrong But yeah, it really is one of those things where it's like just take a look at history History really does have a tendency of repeating itself and Body trends gender stereotypes all that stuff. It all comes back around it really does and I guess I'm, I'm skipping around a lot. I'm skipping from long hair on guys, which um, by the way very attractive, very sexy, if you ask me, and many others. This is not a strange thing for women to find attractive or for men to find attractive on other men, for anyone to find attractive on other men. It is, like I said, hair. It's just, it's a, it can be very sexy. It can be very alluring. It doesn't matter your gender identity. Sexy hair is sexy hair. And especially coming from someone who doesn't identify as having sexy hair, it's especially alluring for me to have a partner that has super sexy, beautiful hair. And also, I'm not the only one, but it really is possible, you guys, 
for people to find other people outside of societal norms and expectations on the genders. It is a very possible and very prevalent for us to exist and to find people that don't fit societal norms extremely sexy, even sexier than societal standards of sexy. Like when I watch shows, you know, like Bachelor in Paradise or Love Island or, you know, any other shows where it's, you know, modern, <laughs> modern dating, at least on TV, and you've got all of those societal body image norms for men, women, otherwise, and it's mainly lots of very thin women, very fit women, very chiseled men, very muscular men, very toned men. You know, there's definitely a certain look to the people on these shows, and that is what we have been taught is sexy. That is what we have been taught is the desirable body, when in reality it is something we have been taught. It is not the truth, the end-all be-all. And when I watch these shows, because I love trashy TV, I personally don't watch these shows and find these people to be sexy. That's just me. I know I am not necessarily in the majority. I don't know that I'm in the minority, but I certainly know that I am not alone in not finding these people attractive. And that's not a good or a bad thing. It just is the way that it is. Now, granted, me being demisexual also has, you know, a little something to do with it, I'm sure people are gonna say, but just because I'm not sexually attracted to somebody doesn't mean I can't look at someone and say they are definitely beautiful or handsome or what have you. And I personally just don't find that visual attractiveness in these people on TV and that's okay. Not everyone looks at me and finds me visually attractive because like I said, the norm or the standard for women is one of being very fit, very thin, very slim, but you know, it's changed it's ever changing and honestly I was just born in the wrong time period if I had been born in like the Renaissance or Baroque times whatever else you know we look at these voluptuous women in the old time paintings and whatnot I would be a luscious treat but that is just like I said not not the norm that today's society goes by it never has been for the time that I have been born. It's unfortunate. It has caused a lot of body image problems in my brain and a lot of physical harm to my body, you know, just through starving myself and over-exercising and stuff through my college years. You know, that was a lot of those 20-some years where I was just harming my body in that way. And no matter what I did, I could never live up to the standards because my body just wasn't built for it. And I know, I know, like I said, I'm all over the place here. You're probably like, I thought we were talking about Dan, not about you. Well, it's all, it all kind of links together, you know? Like I said, people saying that, oh, Dan must be gay because he has long hair and paints his nails. You know, the thought that, that, that those things could exist in a cishet man apparently doesn't compute with some people. I don't get it. I personally find these parts of Dan very attractive. I like it. I like the look very much. And then just to circle back to what I was talking about with my body not being the norm, you know, people saying that he must just be with me for my money or he must just be with me to mooch off of me and live in my apartment or, you know, whatever the case is. Because it's so hard to fathom that a man could find a woman with my body type attractive like that's so hard for some people to understand or even God forbid think of. Can't even fathom it much less understand it. It just it makes me so sad that that is still a thing you know. Like I like to believe that we have come so far and don't get me wrong we have in certain ways but there are also other ways where we clearly are very very <sighs> lacking. And it's sad. I mean, I really just don't understand whether it comes down to societal norms of the way we look or the way we present ourselves, whatever else. I will never be able to understand why people can't just let people love each other. It makes no sense to me. That's something that I can't fathom or understand. Unfortunately, I guess I can fathom it because it happens. There are hateful people out there in the world and I've never understood why looking at two unconventionally or conventionally not attractive people love each other, why that's so hard for people. You know, for someone to look at a couple like Dan and I and be like, there's no way. 
this it doesn't it doesn't work out like someone like me with my body type and everything is destined to be alone forever until I change my body because it's so it's so unfathomable how could somebody love her body or it's just not possible that Dan could be anything other than gay purely because of maybe a couple mannerisms or a couple of ways he presents himself there's just no way that he's straight you know like why can't we a just believe what people say you know if someone says they're gay straight by whatever why can't we just believe it you know unless you're pursuing a relationship with this person why does it matter and then also at the end of the day if two people love each other why is that bad <laughs> Shouldn't we be celebrating it? I mean, at least for me, where it has taken me so long to get to a point where I can share my love with somebody else and that I can accept love from somebody else. It took me so long to get to this point that now that I'm here, it's like, if I see other people loving on each other, oh my God, like it took me so long to get here. I was so lonely for so long that when I see love, I celebrate it. That's amazing. That's amazing that you of whatever age you are, that you finally found love with your person, you know, whatever stage of love you're at. I think it is beautiful. I think it is wonderful. I think it is incredible. And, you know, even before I met Dan, I longed for it. I still found it beautiful and everything. I was a little jealous, <laughs> but like, I still loved it. And it gave me hope that, oh my God, there is, my person is out there, you know, there's hope. But yet some people, just because it's not two conventionally attractive people loving on each other, something about that is unacceptable or not inspiring or heartwarming somehow like i really i don't i don't understand it and then you know there's the people that say oh you know people can love each other i just don't want to see it you know i don't have to see that well why do you care i mean granted there's a difference i'm not asking people who are in love to go out and do super intimate things with each other in front of people. I mean, first off, pretty sure illegal. And second off, like that's intrusive. But like just seeing people share a smooch, holding their hands, like I don't, there is nothing offensive about that. Like I said, I find it beautiful and heartwarming, especially in this day and age where love is so hard to find and hold on to, you know, with divorce rates and everything being where they are. Like I just, I personally, I have such a hard time with this, you guys. And I also just want to like remind people or put it out there, however you're going to want to say it, that if Dan and I or whoever, you know, doesn't fit into a societal mold of a conventionally attractive body type, if they were to try and appease the masses and change the way that they looked or presented themselves and they did become conventionally attractive, this does not all of a sudden change their life and make their life better. I have been thin to a degree. I have been fit to a degree. You know, I mean, it's hard for me to say that I was any of these things because I can't see myself that way. But like looking back on some pictures, I do look back and I'm like, dang, I was skinny. And that's just, I, I can't, it makes me want to laugh because... Like I said, I, I've never ever felt myself to be that. And at the time these photos were taken, it's like, that is not how I was feeling. I was feeling like the biggest person in the room, the biggest person in the world even. Like I, the fact that I can look back on these photos and say that I was thin or skinny or whatever, you know, that is a testament to how far I have come. But you know, I have, I've been there and my life wasn't better. <laughs> You know, if Dan cut his hair and stopped painting his nails, his life wouldn't magically be better. His life is good as it is, you know? I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but like, it wouldn't magically make him the most attractive person in the world just because he was all of a sudden conventionally attractive to societal standards. He still would be like any other person where, was it Dita Von Teese? She's the one that came up with that saying, the whole, you could be the juiciest, ripest peach in the world, but there's still gonna be people who don't like peaches. Like, no matter what you do, no matter how you change yourself you're never gonna please everybody I mean my god if I have learned anything from being on YouTube for this past decade that is <laughs> certainly been the biggest thing or one of the biggest things and it just it's true it's true so if no matter what you do to change yourself you're still never gonna please everybody why would why why even do it in the first place you should be happy you are with yourself the majority of the time out of anybody else in the world, you are with you the most. 
why not focus on what makes you happy? And if you're a people pleaser like me, I know you're gonna be like, yeah, but it would make me happy to make the others happy. No, this is, <laughs> I am speaking purely in you, living for you. There's no one else around, it is just you. So there is no people to please here, except to please yourself. How are you the happiest? Do you enjoy eating? Do you enjoy cooking? You might have a little extra weight on your bones, but let me tell you, I am the heaviest I have ever been. Never felt sexier. Never, never loved myself more. I still have work to do. However, the work that I have done and the place that I am at, I wouldn't trade my weight for that ever. You know, if I could literally snap my fingers and be in my brain, what is the ideal body type for me? If I could snap my fingers and have that happen, but go back to being as depressed as I was back in the day, absolutely not. No, no, like that is horrifying to me. I don't want it. And like I said, there are people who find it sexy and attractive to not be the societal norm. It's true. I know for some people, like I said, very hard to believe. You don't get it. But trust me, the second you open up your brain a little bit and you allow these kinds of more accepting thoughts and whatnot in, be it about yourself or others, oh my god, it changes everything. It changes everything. It changes the way that you treat others. It changes the way you treat yourself. It just makes everything better to kick any kind of hate that you have in your heart to the curb. Get rid of it. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve anybody else. And you'll be so much happier for it. You know, it's such a simple concept to rid your heart of hate so that it can fill instead with happiness. Of course, of course that makes sense. But yet it's so hard to do based on the way that we, as I said, at least in America, were raised. <sighs> It's just such a foreign concept to not hate yourself and want to continually be accepted by society. And I just think that's a darn shame. I think it's really a darn shame. As long as you are happy and you are not hurting others, and I know there's gonna be people, yeah, well, seeing you and Dan or people like you and Dan or, you know, whatever, love on each other does hurt me. It hurts my eyes, blah, blah, blah. Well, you hurt my brain, okay? Trust me, it goes both ways. So, anywho, mascara is on. Uh, did this video do anything for anyone out there? <laughs> I just had some stuff I wanted to talk about, okay? Some stuff I wanted to discuss with y'all. And don't get me wrong, the majority of you are lovely, kind, supportive, accepting, and I thank you. <sighs> I guess it is a case of the squeaky oil gets the grease, whatever that saying is. Um, in any case, I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant for a little bit. <laughs> As I said, I hope someone was able to get something out of it. I doubt I was able to change anyone's mind. Like I said, I mean, I myself am close-minded in this topic. You know, Dan and I love each other. We support each other. We accept each other the way we are. And that's not going to change. Definitely not by someone ignorant enough to say that long hair on a man makes him gay. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have I once again shot myself in the foot? In any case. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening to me. And thank you to the supporters who are out there supporting me in general, but then also supporting Dan and I's relationship. I really appreciate it. A uh, big thank you also to Scentbird once again for sponsoring the video. Please do check out my link down below if you want to get a great deal for yourself and if you want to try out some new fragrances right now. Uh, here's the makeup. Does anyone, is it too late? Do you want it? Are you happy with the makeup? I don't, it's really, it's nothing special. It's nothing new, but uh, here's the makeup. I did it. And I'm just really appreciative of you guys listening to me here. If you are new, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. Tippity tap the notification bell down below and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. And until next time, just stay well until then. Bye.